Antonio starts right now. Pfizer officially requests the FDA to expand authorization to its booster shot for all Americans 18 and up. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, when you should expect to get a booster. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're in the mid 60s, a lot warmer than it was yesterday morning, but we are expecting things to change. And I didn't see any fog on the way in, no. but that doesn't mean it's not out there. Good That's morning, true. everybody. It's Wednesday. It is November 10th and happy birthday to the United States Marine Corps. That's right. Happy birthday. And I didn't see any fog in on the way in either. Mike, uh, do we have a situation similar to yesterday? Uh, not similar. Yesterday we had a lot more mm -hmm. early in the morning, very thick. It just a couple little spec, uh, specks here and there. So just watch out for a couple of you know spots. But yeah, it is definitely warm and humid out there. Uh, we've got temperatures that are well up into the 60s right now. Castor, a little bit of fog. Port SA. There is also some that's being reported right around uh, Seguin. Some of that fog. So, but we do have a cloud cover, and that's kind of helping prevent some of the fog from moving on in here. 66 right now so we are a good 10 15 degrees above average everybody's in the 60s and then these numbers dew points get above that uh, that threshold number so you can feel the humidity when you step outside this morning and we've got a lot of clouds but they are going to be clearing out later on today mold is on the uh, the low side and uh, this morning Probably can go without a jacket, 64 degrees, although, you know, with that humidity, maybe that dampish uh, cool out there and some patchy fog, not a whole heck of a lot, though, and then 78 later on today. And a lot of folks are going to be up into the 80s. We are going to have more sunshine. It's going to be kind of breezy as well. That front's going to move through in the overnight hours, may squeeze out a sprinkle or two. I kind of doubt it. And then, yeah, we get some good fall weather. How long will that last? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Stuff, Mark. Hi, Mike. Thank you very much. Uh, this morning, Pfizer is officially asking the FDA to expand authorization for its booster shot to include all adults. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, Pfizer asking the FDA to expand authorization for its booster shot for all Americans 18 and over. The drug maker is pointing to new data showing a third shot increases protection against symptomatic disease to 95% across all age groups. The request is coming just months after a public debate over boosters for all Americans when an FDA advisory committee voted down a similar request. Dr. Chatterjee voted no, Dr. Perlman voted no, Dr. Gans voted no. But new information suggests the outcome this time could be different. Sources familiar with the discussions now confirming to ABC News that the FDA will not be calling its independent committee to review Pfizer's data, which would mean authorization could happen before Thanksgiving. It will be very likely that everyone will be able to get a booster within a reasonable period of time. The news comes as the country sees an uptick in COVID cases. The new daily average sits at 71,000 cases a day, up almost 13% in the last two weeks, with 21 states seeing an uptick in cases by at least 10%. The common denominator, nearly all of the states are also transitioning to colder weather, forcing people indoors. One of those states, Colorado, where just 5% of ICU beds remain available statewide. The surge so severe, the state has reactivated its crisis standards of care to better staff hospitals. We are going into uh, this surge with fewer people and everyone is tired. Our hospitals and ICUs are filling up with patients who are going on ventilators and many of them dying. As of now, only people who've gotten the Johnson & Johnson one shot are eligible for a booster regardless of age. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. A federal judge has denied former President Trump's claim of executive privilege over hundreds of documents sought by the House Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol breach. National Archives remains on track to turn over White House call logs, video logs and schedules, and three pages of handwritten notes from Trump's then chief of staff. Trump's legal team has informed the D.C. District Court it plans to appeal the judge's decision. The Biden White House has declined to intervene. The National Archives, which inherited Trump's presidential records after he left office, said it will begin handing over records on Friday. For more than four decades, no one knew the identity of a murdered teenage girl whose body was found along Interstate 45 in Walker County near Huntsville. Detectives have now solved that 41-year-old mystery. Investigators identified the victim as Sherry Ann Jarvis, who was 14 when she was killed. 
On Halloween of 1980, Jarvis arrived in Huntsville where witnesses say they saw her asking for directions at a truck stop. The next morning, she was found dead. She was raped and strangled. Identifying Jarvis involved extensive DNA testing and research. Investigators used DNA and the internet to map out a family tree and interviewed family members. Finally, they were able to confirm Jarvis as the victim. Authorities say they have not yet identified a suspect. If you have PayPal or Venmo for business transactions, the IRS might be looking more closely at your accounts. Now requires electronic payment apps to report such transactions if they total more than $600 a year. Business transactions include payments for goods and services. You've always been required to pay tax on those. Now the IRS might know if you don't. The change is part of the American Rescue Plan and designed to crack down on unpaid taxes. The change does not affect reimbursements among family and friends, so don't worry if you use those apps to split a pizza or something similar. Right now, 436, about 65 degrees. And coming up next, the ETSA Roadrunners get ready to continue their undefeated season this Saturday. What coach Jeff Trailer is saying about the team's success so far. And outside with live cam, we're just getting our morning going here on GMSA. Much more to come. Time for a look at morning sports. Now the Lanier Vokes are the co-district 13-5A Division 1 champs. They're head of the playoffs. Head coach Don Gaetan, one loss away from retirement. After 24 seasons at the Westside School and over 40 in coaching, Gaetan has decided to hang up his whistle after this season is over. It's after he was able to leave Lanier back-to-back -back district titles in his 13th postseason. This Saturday, Lanier faces Southside in the Class 5A by district playoffs. I've had a good time here at Lanier and uh, my, my 28th year here and 24 is the year as the head coach. You know, it's for me, it's time to call it quits. You know, my son's coaching now. I, I could go watch his games and I could uh, go watch practices and I could critique, I could critique him. Wish you a happy retirement, Coach, when that does happen. UTSA Roadrunners have made their college football playoff debut at number 23 in the country as they continue their undefeated season Saturday at the Alamo Dome. The team is going for their 10th win in a row against 1-8 Southern Mississippi. They're now the 15th ranked team in college football, according to the latest AP College Football Poll. Quarterback Frank Harris now one of 20 semifinalists for the Davy O'Brien National Quarterback Award after throwing for over 2,000 yards with 18 touchdowns, another four on the ground so far. Now the trick is not to overlook the Golden Eagles, where the Roadrunners are favored by 33 points. And if you go watch the Alabama game, you can see how talented and how good they really are. Um, they've had injuries at quarterback, which always hurts, and um, injuries has some key positions on their team that's uh, not allowed them to get off to the start they want to as far as the wins and losses. Uh, but they've got a good football team. We approach them all the same. I mean, these guys, we really lock in, you know, I think, in my personal opinion, we even lock even in, you know, harder because we know, um, you know, sometimes you may, you may overlook an opponent, but uh, we don't. I mean, we approach them all the same. So uh, we're going to approach it just like they, the best team in the conference. Kick off in the Dome this Saturday, 2.30 p.m. And KSAT 12 Sports will be there. Well, our Spurs have managed to only win three games this season, two against one of the worst teams in the NBA, the Orlando Magic, home and away. Their most recent loss was to the Thunder in OKC. Spurs managed to get a 16-point lead, only lose 99-94. Tonight, they welcome the Sacramento Kings to town. That game is set for 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Better luck tonight, guys. Yeah, we hope so. Go Spurs go. Time now, 441 and 65 degrees. It's still ahead. Your microwave might be getting an extra workout in the next couple of months, what you can do to make it last a little longer. And next, first look at an interview with authorities investigating the shooting on the film set Rust involving actor Alec Baldwin. And welcome back. It's 444. The Santa Fe District Attorney is speaking to ABC News on the latest developments in the investigation into the fatal shooting on the set of the Alec Baldwin film. ABC's Kaylee Hartung has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive, one-on-one -on -one with the Santa Fe District Attorney. How did live ammunition 
end up on this set. It's been nearly three weeks since the fatal shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the set of Alec Baldwin's film Rust. Crew members now at the center of this investigation and DA Mary Carmack Altweez is prepared to wait months for it to be completed. What has been most concerning as you've learned the links this production went to to try to save a dollar here and there. There were so many levels of failures on that on that set. Um, there were several different places where this tragic incident could have been avoided and it, it wasn't avoided. Coming up at 7 a.m. We'll have more on what the Santa Fe District Attorney says is next in this rapidly developing case. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now to late breaking news, San Antonio firefighters responding to a fire on the city's south side. Jonathan Cotto joins us on the scene live. Jonathan, where are you exactly and what do you know so far? Mark, I'm located on the corner of East Gerald and South Flores on the 5900 block here on the city's south side where San Antonio Fire Department has been busy battling the flames in this abandoned apartment building right behind me. I'm going to move out of the way so you can get a closer look of what's taking place here. San Antonio Fire Department responding to this scene roughly after 3 o'clock this morning. They say... This building was consumed by flames. It's an apartment. It's an abandoned apartment uh, building. One family did reside in one of the units. Now, the cause of the fire remains under investigation. They are right now roughly estimating about 80 to $90,000 worth in damage. But again, the cause of the fire remains under investigation. Arson and fire teams are here on scene. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, the microwave is probably one of the most used appliances in your home. Here's 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris with how to keep it running longer. Caroline Schofield relies on her microwave oven because it's a big convenience and a time saver. We use it all day long, every day for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, and then afterwards we have popcorn to watch a movie. That's a lot of use. On average, Consumer Reports says a microwave should last about 10 years. And they say there are some simple things you can do to help yours live a long life. First, cleaning. Spattered food can absorb energy and cause hot spots when it's running. That can damage the interior, so spills should be wiped up promptly. There's some important technology inside your microwave's door, so be gentle. The door has switches inside that shut the oven off when you open it. There are also latch components that need to stay aligned, so don't slam the door. Never run a microwave empty. If there's no food to heat, the unit can overheat. Certain things can catch fire, cause sparks or arcing, and should never go in the microwave, such as dishware with metallic paint. Also, brown paper bags, metal pans, takeout containers with metal handles, aluminum foil, and even twist ties. Over-the-range microwaves aren't easy to replace, so give them extra care. Use the exhaust fan when you're cooking to avoid moisture collecting on the electronics of the microwave. And clean the exhaust filter by soaking it in hot water and a degreasing detergent. Check your manual to see if it's okay in the dishwasher. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Everybody's in the studio is kind of looking at the screen going, I might need to do that. <laughs> yes. I might have missed that part. You need to put that on the list. I mean, some of that stuff you find out pretty quick, right, Mike? Uh, if, if, well, I mean, if you're I doing it wrong. Care. I knew about the metal, you know, yeah. twist right. but a brown paper bag. Yeah, that's the one I'm kind of I perplexed of, by. I hadn't heard about that, but normally I guess I, I don't put it in the microwave just yeah. because I'm putting it in another container or something. And most of the Chinese food containers don't have the little metal, metal wire anymore. Not anymore. Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah. yeah. So you wouldn't have to worry about that. Right. Wow. This yeah. I know. picture, I, I, I mean, it, it's so vivid. It almost looks like it's been colorized, but it, know. it hasn't. It's like a nice, beautiful watercolor. It, frame that and put it over your couch, mm -hmm. you know, that'd be great. So uh, we do have a lot of clouds starting off this morning. Notice how it doesn't look quite as fuzzy along the horizon. We do still have a little bit of fog. There's a hint of it around Castroville. That's the only spot being reported here, but there's also some being reported around uh, Seguin. Just a couple little hints here and there, so not a whole heck of a lot. It is a lot more humid this morning than the past couple of days, and seems like every day so far this work week, this graphic.
traffic has shown the dew points, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere are up about uh, five, close to 10 degrees compared to the previous day, because yesterday's dew points, of course, were up about five to 10 degrees over what they were on Monday. So yes, it is more humid out there, and this humidity is going to be sticking around throughout the rest of today. Wind coming in here out of the southeast, a little bit on the breezy side today, about to 10, 20 mile per hour winds. There's that drier air off to the northwest. And as we go on in through well this afternoon, not much really changes, but then overnight and by tomorrow morning, the winds are going to be shifting around. It looks like it's going to be um, probably about this time tomorrow morning, maybe a little bit earlier when we see the wind shift and then that drier air is going to start to come on in. So as you are getting ready to head out to work and school tomorrow morning, yes, it will be more comfortable and that dry air is going to continue to filter in throughout the day tomorrow. And also it will be breezy once again tomorrow, but different direction winds out of the uh, north to northeast as opposed to the southeast so that northeasterly wind pulls in that beautiful fall like air. So this afternoon we are going to see a little more sunshine mixed in with the clouds. Lots of clouds hanging around here this morning and then cloudy skies and as that front moves through it may squeeze out a couple of showers. Again, it's going to be about this time tomorrow morning. Uh, one or two of them, that'll be about it. And a lot of uh, computer models, things are really looking like they're going to be clearing out fairly quickly. So by about drive time tomorrow, we should have a, a beautiful start to the day and it's going to be gorgeous all day long and really through the weekend. There's another little maybe fly in the ointment with another front that's going to try and slide through here. More on that in a second. 74 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. A lot of clouds this morning. We'll start to uh, out, see more sunshine mixed in later on today, and that's going to put temperatures up close to 80, partly cloudy and again breezy. Now tomorrow we will have in, in the overnight hours tonight as the front moves on through here, it may squeeze out a couple of uh, sprinkly showers here and there. Don't be surprised at that. Most of us won't see anything. Then we clear out quite nicely about the same situation, and I didn't put a actual front on this graphic, but Friday night late into Saturday, there's another reinforcing shot of some dry air coming in here, and that may again squeeze out a little sprinkly shower early, early Saturday, but just a good looking weekend then. So nice, nice forecast. Indeed. Yes, it is. We'll take it. Yes. Thank you, Mike. 451, about 65 degrees. And coming up next, a preview of the Country Music Awards that air tonight on ABC. Plus, a former NSYNC star finds out he's related to Britney Spears. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, zero, three, five, Fireball four. Your daily four number is two, four, nine, one, Fireball one. Cash five, six, seven, 13, 19, 25. And your Mega Millions, 9, 14, 16, 26, 49, Mega Ball 14, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. A former boy band star and Britney Spears find out they're related. Plus, BTS is set to take the stage at the American Music Awards. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. But look, I wanted to be related to the Queen. Well, now I'm related to the Queen of Pop. Singer Lance Bass has a new relative who's an old friend. B Britney Spears! Bass just discovered that he and Britney Spears are sixth cousins. The former NSYNC star found out about the family connection with Spears while appearing on Ancestry's online quiz show, Two Lies and a Leaf. BTS will take the stage with Megan the Stallion for the televised world premiere performance of Butter at the 2021 American Music Awards. And BTS and Megan the Stallion were among the first crop of 2021 AMA performers announced. This year's show, hosted by rapper Cardi B, will air on ABC on Sunday, November 21st at 8. And speaking of award shows, look for Luke Bryan hosting the Country Music Awards tonight on ABC. The American Idol judge is the first CMA solo host. And happy birthday to CMA nominee and performer Miranda Lambert. She's 38 today. And Grey's Anatomy star Ellen Pompeo turns 52. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Derek Dennis. And time now, 456, and it's 65 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, new information about the emergency response to the deadly Astroworld concert disaster in Houston. Plus, Netflix is launching a new TikTok-like service for kids. Details coming up in Tech Bytes. And let's see how the roads are looking. It's still very early right now. We, we do have a few commuters out there right now. There's 410 at Ingram Road. Stephen will be here with an update to get things going on GMSA.
There's new details this morning about the emergency response to the Astral concert disaster in Houston. And outside with live cam, a mild start. Doesn't appear quite as foggy as it was yesterday morning. Beautiful shot looking back towards downtown. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to midweek. It is November 10th on our calendars. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a great week so far. The weather's, you know, been pretty nice, but this, you know, morning you definitely feel it's a little warmer than it has been. Yeah, no jacket required this morning necessarily, at least here in town, Mike Osterhage. No, and really not anywhere. I mean, temperatures are very, very mild. We got a lot more humidity. This was expected, and today's going to be the, the warm day, and then things are going to be changing overnight. Right now we are at 64 degrees. The average normal low temperature is in the low 50s and look at that bottom number two points at 62 you get above 60 start to feel the humidity. it's not oppressively humid but got a lot of uh, humidity out there relatively speaking 93 percent and plenty of clouds out there 78 for high temperature today and we are going to start to clear out somewhat a lot of folks are going to be seeing uh, 80 and low 80s as well around the area. And as far as the aquifer, yesterday's reading, it did drop down one tenth of a foot. And the allergens, don't know about y'all, we were talking about it. Seems like there's something in the air, although the only thing being reported right now is mold. But uh, yeah, just, I don't know, kind of that early early allergy season, something like that. Anyway, as far as uh, any fog, there's just a hint of reduced visibility at Castroville. That's really the only spot reporting anything as of right. The cloud right now, the cloud cover is kind of uh, helping to keep a lot of fog from really forming up, but just a mention of a patch or two and very warm and humid. It's going to stay on the warm side, kind of humid throughout the day, partly cloudy skies, and then that front moves through overnight. It may squeeze out a couple of showers as it comes on through, and it's going to be uh, probably this time or even earlier uh, tomorrow morning as it moves on through here. We'll clear out fairly quickly, and we'll have some great fall weather then. Maybe another uh, little reinforcing shot of some dry air comes in just in time for the weekend. Looks like a pretty good-looking weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos is in the studio. Good morning, sir. Anything uh, big going on? Good morning, Mike. Well, if you're going to be heading out the door in the next few moments, you're basically going to have the roads to your Yourself. Let's take a look right now at Trans Guide, see how things are shaping up around town. We do have Loop 1604 at Gulebra there. A few folks out there this morning. We've been spotting a lot of light traffic, and of course, we always know that's good news if you're going to get your morning started early with us. And uh, take a look right there, Loop 410 north at Ingram. Exactly what we've been seeing throughout the morning. Just some quiet roads here in town, but some things to be on the lookout for if you're traveling through 1604, perhaps State Highway 151. Uh, our map has detected a crash there right at Wiseman Boulevard. Now that it hasn't pinpointed the exact direction if this is going to be in the north or southbound lanes or east or west, but make sure that you are driving carefully out there this morning. Uh, no trans guide cameras to show us what's going on, but of course we'll continue to give you those updates here on GMSA. Let's take a wider look at the map because as I mentioned, it is a pretty good start to Wednesday morning. We do have a small stretch of orange right up here in those northbound lanes of 35. That is some construction that's going on out there, but if you're going to be traveling in from New Braunfels on 35, it's just 25 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area, 27 coming in from 281 and Bull Verde, and we're looking at 26 minutes from I-10 and Bernie. Let's take one last look around town I-35 at Cesar Travis. Got a few more folks out there this morning. It's been a quiet start, so that gives us plenty of time to talk construction. That's coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thanks, sir. Now the latest on that late breaking news, San Antonio firefighters responding, responding rather to a fire on the city's south side. Jonathan Cotto is live on the scene and joins us now. Now, Jonathan, where exactly are you and what do you know so far? Stephanie, I'm located on the corner of East Gerald and South Flores, where the San Antonio Fire Department has been busy all morning battling the flames at a vacant, and I want to clarify, a vacant apartment building with the exception of one unit. There was one family in that unit, but this is what we know so far, and I'm going to step away that way you can take a quick look. San Antonio Fire Department responding to this apartment building shortly after 3 o'clock to fight the flames consuming the back end of this building. They say on arrival they were already dealing with some collapsed walls, but were able to quickly gain control of the fire. The apartment building is vacant, and like I said, with the exception of one unit. That family in that unit made it out okay and were not injured. They tell us that family will be able to get back into their home once the scene is clear. Now, fire crews are estimating anywhere from eighty dollars to $90,000 worth in damages. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. Arson is on scene. And I have to mention to you, I did have the opportunity to speak with the woman that lived inside in one of those units. She said she had just been there for a couple of days, and she's getting ready to move out. So so she just heard a couple of noises next door and is unsure what caused the fire herself. She just says she's thankful to be alive. 
Reporting from the South Side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. It was a case of an HEB employee killed back in 2015, and now the murder trial of her accused killer is in question. R.C. Curtis is accused in the death of Paula Boyd. Her body was found in her apartment back in 2015. In the midst of the legal process, a Bear County judge declared a mistrial for Curtis. So far, it's not clear what led to that decision. Later today, the court plans to address the matter and decide whether the case will be dismissed or ret retried. The trial began early last week, and Boyd was the grandmother of Curtis's wife. A medical examiner determined Boyd died from strangulation and blunt force trauma. New details this morning about the emergency response to that concert disaster over in Houston. A nine-year-old boy among the victims still fighting for their lives. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has more. This morning, a group of teenagers now giving their first-hand account of the deadly concert tragedy in Houston Friday night. That was probably one of the scariest things that I've ever been through. Um, gates had fallen, police were everywhere, and uh, it was just chaos already in the making. The teens who say they were injured during the chaos describe a lack of security. Jonathan Espinoza says several people were passing out, and he claims security did little to nothing to help. 200 plus people come, and instantly my ribs are getting collapsed into, into the gate. And I look at the guard, and he looks at me, and he's like, well, I can't do nothing. One security guard hired to work the event told TMZ he didn't even show up for the job because he felt the conditions were unsafe and the security team was understaffed. Others at the concert describe lax bag checks and rampant drug use. The Wall Street Journal reports investigators are looking into whether counterfeit drugs played a role in some of the deaths, including pills laced with fentanyl. Eight people died and dozens were injured when the crowd surged toward the stage, crushing each other. At least 18 lawsuits have now been filed. The event organizer, Live Nation, and the rapper on stage, Travis Scott, are named as defendants in most of them. Questions remain about why Scott kept performing for nearly 40 minutes after officials had declared a mass casualty incident. The Houston Firefighters Union said it had trouble communicating with medics at the scene who are working for a private company. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. NASA is pushing back the goal of landing humans on the moon by 2024. Instead, it will happen at 2025 at the earliest. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson says they lost nearly seven months in dealing with litigation. Blue Origin sued NASA after it gave the full contract to the uh, build the human landing system to SpaceX instead of funding both companies. A court ruled Friday that NASA could proceed with SpaceX. Nelson says the delay was also caused by the pandemic and lack of funding for the development of the human landing system. And time now, it's 5.07 and it's about 65 degrees out there. Still ahead, Twitter launches its new subscription service. We'll tell you what it offers, including the ability to undo tweets. Also next, a look at how some San Antonio organizations and citizens are supporting the Jewish community in a new way. Outside with live cam, mid-60s, a far cry from some of the weather we've seen over the last week or so, but looking good here in the downtown area on a very early Wednesday morning. Unity over hate, the San Antonio Jewish community gathering together with friends to preach that message. And last night on the 83rd anniversary of Crystal Knot, the Night of Broken Glass, hundreds of people gathered at the Jewish Community Center. This comes on the heels of some anti-Semitic messages spreading in San Antonio in recent weeks. The rhetoric drew so symmetry to November of 1938, but with a different outcome. And even the communities of where Kristallnacht took place in, in Germany, um, the, the community didn't respond. They didn't say, not here. And so the genocide began. But here in San Antonio, we're going to say, not here, not today, not now, never again. And to honor the anniversary, Bear County commissioners signed a proclamation honoring the anniversary of Kristallnacht and say it is vowing to drive out hate and promote human dignity. Just about 5.12 on your Wednesday morning. Still had Netflix testing a TikTok-like short video service for kids. And next, a look at Fitbit's new feature that tells you whether you should exercise or recover. Let's go with recover. <laughs> Every day, countless adults abuse minors online. My name is Rue. I'm a 38-year-old mother of three. But with the help of my team, we become the target. Now. 
to protect the underage. Where I think you should duck down. He's staring straight at you. Undercover, underage, exclusively on Discovery Plus. When you hear cough, cough, sneeze, sneeze, <laughs> it's time for plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Alka Seltzer Plus Cold Relief dissolves quickly, instantly ready to start working. So you can bounce back fast with Alka Seltzer Plus. We made a promise to our boy Blue that we would make the healthiest foods possible with the finest natural ingredients and real meat first. And that's our promise to you and your dog or cat. Because when you love them like family, you want to feed them like family. Welcome back. 515, Twitter's paid subscription service now available here in the U.S. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter brings its subscription service to the U.S. Twitter Blue costs about $3 a month, and for that, users get special features, including the ability to undo a tweet. The subscription also includes free access to articles from hundreds of news sites. Netflix is reportedly testing a new feed for kids inspired by the success of TikTok. According to Bloomberg, a feature called Kids Clips will offer young viewers short videos. It won't have original content, just highlights of Netflix children's shows and movies. And your Fitbit can now tell you if it's time to take a day off from exercising. A new feature called a daily readiness score suggests whether users need a recovery day. It also makes the calculation based on activity, sleep, and heart rate data. I can't remember if it's my recovery day, but I guess my Fitbit can now jog my memory. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. I like his jokes. <laughs> Again, I, I need to find out. I mean, yeah. it's his personal biz, but right. I mean, he's got the dad jokes down. Yeah. I don't think he's a dad yet. He's I, a young I don't, fella. I don't think he is. <laughs> yeah, the, the jokes are there. It's like he got a master's degree in dad jokes. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see how traffic's <laughs> working over there. Stephen Cavazos, good morning. Good morning. But you know, Mark, Mike, hanging out with you guys. I hope I can be as good of a dad joke teller when I uh, maybe, I don't know, anytime soon. I've got a whole list I can share yeah. with you, so I'll, I'll be sure to share those. Mike oh. has raised the bar pretty high for all of us. On yes. Dad jokes. Uh, yeah, he's really good at the dad jokes there, so hopefully I can pick up on that. Well, one thing that's not picking up is this traffic out over here. It's been pretty light throughout the morning. U.S. 90 at 35. Been a very quiet start, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, if you were with us. If you're going to be heading out the door in the next few moments, you're essentially going to have the roads to yourself. But keep in mind, there are some issues to be on the lookout for. We do have a crash, thankfully, that cleared here from State Highway 151 at Wiseman Boulevard. Boulevard. And as you can see, those lanes are wide open on 151. So some good news there. But let's take some jumps around because there is some construction to be on the lookout for. Uh, we told you about this stretch of orange. If you were going to be traveling up to 35, maybe to New Braunfels a little bit later this morning at FM 482. Uh, checking the Texas website, this construction should be wrapping up by 530 this morning. Uh, we are closer to getting closer to that time. So again, make sure that you're preparing accordingly. Hopefully we will not see anything that's going to cause any big delays. Let's take a jump right over here. Here, though we've been talking about this throughout the week. This roadway construction started on November 8th and should be wrapping up on December 6th. As part of the I-10 Kendall extension project, it's led to a full closure of the eastbound exit at 540 ramp to State Highway 46 and the Bandera Road. Uh, traffic will be diverted to US 87 exit ramp in Eucenic Loop Road for the turnarounds. But one wider look at the map does show it's still pretty green. Mike's got the forecast, so it's looking pretty nice outside. And my old standby is horse walks into a bar. Bartender says, why the long face? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> my boys just went, oh, he told it again. So <laughs> anyway, a uh, beautiful picture out there. And there's the moon. And looks like uh, it is Venus right there because moon, Venus, and then Saturn and Jupiter are all kind of in line, but not quite uh, as clustered as what they were. But that's a great looking picture. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. The next few nights, uh, maybe this evening as the, the sun is going down and we might be able to see some of those uh, moon and some of the, the planets out there. But then once we get this front moving on through here, it should be a pretty good moon gazing, stargazing weather as we go on in toward the weekend. It doesn't look quite as fuzzy out there in this picture. As a matter of fact, uh, we don't have any fog being reported as at, uh, any of the areas, cities around town as of right now. And temperatures are very mild. 67 Stinson and Pleasanton, 64 here at the airport. Everybody, you know, in the 60s as of right now and about 10, 15 degrees above normal, above the average. And uh, we've got yesterday we had a lot of those mid high clouds hanging around here. This moisture hanging around. 
Now we've got some dry air coming on in here. So once we get rid of these clouds this morning, some of the low clouds, we are going to see more sunshine later on today. And then you can see a little bit of this, uh, this kind of rotational action coming on in here. That's the front that's going to be coming through tonight. Now it's not a big, big front. Um, yes, it will get rid of the humidity, which is good news. And as far as any rain chances, uh, it depends on what computer model you look at, because this model last half hour, a different computer model. This one is not very encouraging as far as rain at all. So if there is maybe a 10% chance, if there is a shower or two, it's going to be very few and far between. This model has most of the rain well off to the east. So I guess what you can take away from this is, again, this is not going to be any sort of really a rain event. Get a couple of sprinkles. That'll be about it. And all this is really going to be happening before a lot of folks are even hitting the road. So even about the time we go on the air at 430 or even before that, and then we're going to clear out fairly nicely throughout the afternoon tomorrow. And we will see a nice drop in the humidity and dew point temperatures. Kind of come back up a little bit. And then we get another reinforcing shot of some drier air coming on in here for the weekend. So here's a front coming through tonight and then one also that moves through here late Friday into Saturday and Again, that one is not going to come through with a whole lot of fanfare as far as any rain, but there's just a very small chance again for a sprinkle as that moves through in the wee hours of Friday night, early Saturday morning. 74 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature then up to 78. So it is going to be a warm one. We will have the clouds break up a little more sunshine today than what we had yesterday and also kind of breezy. And then that front comes through in the wee hours tomorrow morning and it will still be kind of mild right before it moves through, but then the drier air comes on in here. It'll be at 74 degrees, so it's not going to be like a huge blast of cold air, but that drier air will then allow temperatures, drier air clear skies to uh, drop down. Temperatures will be in the uh, 50s, upper 40s for lows, highs in the low 70s. Really nice. Nice and nice yes. cold mornings again. Yes, and a good looking evening, Saturday evening. Come join Steph and I over there at the Alamo Quarry as we welcome right. the man himself. Santa. Mr. Claus. <laughs> yes. The yes. weather will be nice, but we hear we're still going to see snow. Uh, yes. Some type of snow. Yes, I, I didn't put that in the forecast. There will be some snow out there. So. <laughs> Just there, though. An isolated snow. Yes, very, very isolated. <laughs> 521, about 65 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, John Krasinski, Selma Blair are set to be honored, and John Cleese talks about his Clifford co stars. Lottery numbers pick three, zero, three, five, fireball four, daily four, two, four, nine, one, fireball one. Cash five, six, seven, 13, 19, 25. And your mega millions, nine, 14, 16, 26, 49, mega ball 14, mega plier three. Good luck. It's exactly 525, a beloved children's book series debuting on the big screen. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. A Quiet Place Part Two director John Krasinski is set to be honored by the Media Access Awards, celebrating film and TV representation and advancement of people with disabilities. Other honorees include Selma Blair, whose treatment for multiple sclerosis was chronicled in Introducing Selma Blair, and CODA stars Marley Matlin and Troy Kotzer, and that film's casting directors. The ceremony will stream live on November 17th at MediaAccessAwards.com. You said you weren't looking for a pet. And we're not. So you won't be interested in him. But Clifford the Big Red Dog stars Jack Whitehall and Tony Hale were very interested in working with the legendary John Cleese. That was amazing. Like John Cleese is one of my heroes and, you know, kind of the reason that I became a comedian. I was nervous on set. I just kind of like, hey, John, hi. <laughs> I mean, I, what do you say? <laughs> You're everything to me. <laughs> You know, they say never meet your heroes, but thankfully I can report that John is a lovely man and very avuncular and funny and uh, still has this kind of sense of mischief, even though he's in his 80s now. He's like always wanting to play and to laugh and to, you know, uh, create. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check 526, about 65 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a look at how high gas prices are expected to impact upcoming holiday travel and when we could get some relief at the pump. If you're a fan of the popcorn they sell at the movies, you're sort of in luck. We'll tell you about a major theater change plans to sell popcorn in stores. Mm, but will it be the same? Also, we have a pet that needs a new home this morning. We're gonna check in with our friends at the Animal Defense League. One local man has gone from defending our country to beautifying our city. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story just ahead. 
Making headlines this morning, get higher gas prices continue to be a problem at the pump, but could relief be on the way? The San Antonio Fire Department investigating the cause of a fire at an apartment complex on the city's south side. Details coming up next. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting at a humid 65 degrees. Not too bad, but Mike says look forward to a cold front. Hey. Hi, hi. <laughs> it's Wednesday the 10th and Mike Osterhage is here with your weather authority forecast. Yes, indeed. And as you saw in that one uh, city cam live cam picture, uh, yeah, you sort of see it in this one too. Some of those clouds out there and those are going to be breaking up by later on today. The clouds have kind of helped to prevent a whole lot of fog from forming up so we didn't uh, lose all the heat on space, but we still have a uh, very close uh, difference between the temperature and the dew point. Dew points are up to 62. You get above 60, you kind of start to feel it a little bit. However, back to the uh, issue with fog, we don't have anything being reported as of right now. There may be a little uh, hint of it as we roll on through the rest of the morning. All right, here's the water vapor imagery. And yesterday, of course, we had a lot of those uh, kind of mid and high clouds hanging around here. That's this extra moisture. Now it is drier upstairs in the atmosphere, so we are going to see more sunshine once we get rid of some of these morning clouds. That's going to help to put temperatures back up into the upper 70s and close to 80 later on today. Mold is on the low side. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out in about, uh, a couple of hours or so. 74 at noon, 78 for a high temperature. Kind of breezy today. Southeasterly wind will continue to pull in some of that humidity. Then late tonight, that front moves through here. Beautiful fall weather ahead. Details coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what is the latest, sir? Good morning, Mike. Looking forward to that fall weather, but something that I'm not looking forward to is talking about this crash that we have here off Loop 410 at Callahan. Uh, unfortunately, this just popped up here, and we're going to keep our eyes on it, but it looks like this is on the Axis Road. Uh, we do have some first responders out there working to assist that driver, so hopefully they are okay, uh, but it does look like traffic is still moving through that area. Again, we do have, it looks like also a hero truck working to assist that driver out. Not sure how many vehicles are involved at this point, because the shot's a little grainy there, but just watch out for those first responders and that driver who again are working to get this scene cleared out. Taking you right to the map, it doesn't look like we're seeing any yellow or orange building up in those lanes, so just watch out for that. Those flashing lights again, follow the rules of the road. Uh, something that's not cleared up just yet is right here along 35 northbound FM 42 where some road work continues. We're seeing a stretch of red and orange, but we're going to keep our eyes on that. But the overall morning, we're still seeing a lot of green on that screen. Taking you right to those inbound times traveling to San Antonio. Well, green across the board, 29 minutes coming in from I-10 in Seguin, 22 coming in from Lavernia on 87, and 28 coming in from 37 on Floydesville. From Floydesville, that is. One last look here at 410 at Callahan. We'll continue to watch this crash closely. We're also going to talk AAA gas prices coming up a little later on in this newscast. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, sir. Now to the latest on our late breaking news. San Antonio firefighters have been battling flames at an apartment complex on the city's south side. Jonathan Cotto joins us live now. And Jonathan, do you know if anyone was hurt? Stephanie, fortunately, no. The only family living inside one of these apartment units was able to make it out safely. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like just moments ago. San Antonio Fire Department responding to the 5900 block of South Flores. That's near East South Cross. Shortly after 3 o'clock, they say the garage area, which is on the backside of this apartment building, went up in flames, damaging several units. They tell us the garage was being used for storage. Now, on arrival, fire crews tell us a wall collapsed while they were tackling the flames, but were able to quickly get control of the fire. Now, the apartment building is vacant, with the exception of that one unit that I mentioned. The family in that unit, again, made it out okay and were not injured. They tell us the family will be able to go back into their home once the scene is secure. Now, Mark, Stephanie, I did have a chance to speak with that family that had to evacuate. They say they had just been there for a couple of days and were moving out here soon in the next couple of days and are just thankful to be okay this morning. Now, fire crews are estimating roughly anywhere from eighty dollars to $90,000 in damage. Of course, the cause of this fire remains under investigation. Reporting from the city south side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. New this morning, two people are out of their home after a fire broke out in their house overnight. It happened just before midnight in the 1100 block of Highland Oaks near Pin Road on the city's west side. According to firefighters, a grease fire got out of control and burned through the roof of the house. Everyone was able to get out safely and no one was hurt. The American Red Cross was called to assist the people living there. 
534. Every year, the days around Thanksgiving are some of the busiest travel days. And as CNN's Brett Conway reports, we might get a glimpse of pre-pandemic travel this holiday, even as people are paying more at the pump. Think about this time last year. We didn't have a vaccine. People were scared. Folks just kind of stayed home. But this year, with vaccines, comes... A lot more confidence. People are feeling better about traveling. Ready to get back out there. It's almost going to feel like 2019 all over again, which was a really big year. We're close to pre-pandemic numbers. Which means loading up on beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes might mean packing into planes or tackling traffic. AAA expects more than 53 million people will travel this Thanksgiving holiday, a 13% increase from last year. But as the economy rebounds, the price of crude oil skyrockets, putting pressure on the White House to act. We have tools in our tool belts that we can potentially address this with. But no specifics have been laid out, and experts say there's only so much the president, any president, can do. A new forecast from the federal government predicts crude prices will hold steady and then drop back down next year. Until then, these high prices are getting passed on at the pump. AAA says the national average for a gallon of gas is now 342 compared to 211 a year ago. To put it in perspective, though, it's only about 80 cents more than what they paid in uh, 2019. So it's more. But as, as we've always discovered, no matter how much gasoline prices are, people are still going to take that trip. They'll just budget along the way. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The number of people who have become naturalized United States citizens are at its highest level in 13 years. That's according to new data from the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. There are about 885,000 people naturalized in fiscal year 2021. That's compared to 625,000 in 2020. There are 9 million people in the U.S. who are lawful permanent residents who may be eligible to apply for citizenship. In July, the Biden administration said it planned to introduce an unprecedented effort to encourage those eligible immigrants to apply. And the few, the proud, the Marines, we all know the slogan. Today, November 10th, the day before Veterans Day, honors the establishment of the U.S. Marine Corps. The military branch started way back in 1775, leading up to the American Revolution. Members provide protection at sea along with the Navy, and Marines proudly say, once a Marine, always a Marine. So if you know one, you can mark the day by thanking them for their service. From all of us here at KSET, we thank you for keeping our country safe. Amen. 537, about 65 degrees. And still ahead, need a job. Another major retailer is raising its minimum wage and offering to pay for employees' education. And up next, we check in for the latest on No Shave November. Taking a look outside with live cam. If you're a fan of the humidity, it's kind of back this morning. We're at 65 degrees. And if you're not, just wait till tomorrow. We'll be right back. No Shave November is in full swing and things are really getting scruffy around here on GMSA and the KSAT 12 Newsroom. Stephen Cavazos joins us now with an update on how things are going. Good morning, morning. Stephen. And I just found out, this is kind of late breaking news, <laughs> that this, you guys named this, this yeah. character? Yes. Max Massey and I have dubbed him uh, Hank. Hank. Hank, yeah. our KSAT mascot for No Shave November. I think it's pretty fitting. Uh, you know, I actually went to the barber yesterday to get my hair cut. Uh -huh. I said, can you please leave the whiskers? I'm trying to grow this out for a good cause. Cause. So I'm looking more like my cat every day. <laughs> yeah. By your yeah. cat. <laughs> like your cat. It, it, it's all for a good cause. Yeah. And <laughs> this morning, obviously, we want to remind our viewers that everyone is taking part and why people are in our station are taking part of No Shave November. It is an important cause. Just take a look on your screen right now. We have about 15 guys that are competing or participating, I should say, this year uh, in, K in our No Shave November endeavors. And we've already raised close or over that is over $3,000. So we're really hitting the the mark there. Obviously, we're going to continue to ask for the support from our viewers at home. And we if obviously it's a very fun competition for us here in the case at newsroom to see who can come out on top right now. Mark is still leading the charge there with $551. Uh, Justin Horam right behind him and uh, Mike, you are uh, you're, you're up there as well. Uh, but <laughs> go team gray hair. Yeah, I had to give him the chance to say it. But the, the great thing is, if even if you can't pick, uh, you know, who you want to donate to, every one of our guys has participated for a different reason, obviously close to everybody's heart. So if you feel compelled, donate to our entire team as a whole. We're all yeah. going to benefit and not just that, but the foundations and the, you know, the foundations that benefit cancer research treatment and prevention will really benefit from that generosity as well.
All right, so for more on those stories and how to donate to the team, go to ksat.com slash right. no shave. Got to be honest around here, Mondays are kind of interesting in the newsroom because everybody walks in and kind of checking the whiskers out. <laughs> yeah. See what happened you over know, the I weekend. A, I got a good little stash going yeah, right it's, now. Yeah, yeah it's, it's looking really good. It's it, like the instant uh, goatee. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'll say Desi Arnaz. Desi Arnaz. <laughs> got it. All right. Stephen, thank you for thank the you update. Guys. Right now, it is 542, about 65 degrees out of the airport and coming up next we're going to check in with our friends at the animal defense league and with the pet that needs a new home this morning Well, Michelle was just kind of making fun of the dogs. Actually, I was a little, a little bit of bed. It's <laughs> yeah. early. Yeah, it's early. Sometimes we all wake up looking like this. Michelle's here from the Animal Defense League, and who's this little baby? This is Lorna. So Lorna, she's three years old, believe it or not. She's an old soul. Um, but yeah, she's available for adoption at our Nacogdoches campus. You can see she is missing one of her eyes. Um, we're not sure what happened. She uh, was transferred from Animal Care Services over to our Nacogdoches campus. Um, she is a little shy. She needs a home that's going to be a little patient with her but she's the sweetest thing and she's so small and compact yeah maybe not best with little little kids around yeah. that one since she is kind of on the shy side but she will warm up oh, a little for bit sure. and, and you never know like my most recent adoption she was like this whenever i adopted her i brought her home and she just completely came out of her shell so sometimes you never know they just need to be in a more comfortable environment okay what y'all got going on <laughs> so uh lauren is going to be one of our babies that will be joining us this weekend at the auto show um, yes. from our segment yesterday so if she hasn't already been adopted she'll be joining us at the San Antonio Audio Show um, over at the Convention Center this weekend. We'll be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All right. Well, if you'd like more information about this little baby, oh, she's just a sweetheart. Head on over there to the Animal Defense League over at 11300 Nacogdoches or, of course, the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. Thank yes, you, Michelle. Thank you. And in your morning consumer headlines, Macy's raising its wages. The company says it is boosting minimum pay to $15 an hour by next May. The move is an effort to attract and retain employees during the worker shortage. Macy's is also launching a tuition benefit program. The company will cover 100% of tuition, books, and fees for college and other education options. Several other companies like Walmart and Target have similar programs. Remember Kmart? Well, they're set to have only six locations in the continental U.S. by the end of the year. Kmart owned by Sears, which purchased them out of bankruptcy back in 2005. There were 2,100 Kmarts at the time of its O2 bankruptcy filing and 1,400 when it was purchased by Sears. The combined company Sears Holdings filed for bankruptcy in 2018 has since been closing stores under both brands. Kmart has struggled to find the workers needed to keep the doors open. Most of the soon to be shuttered stores will close just before the holiday shopping season. The last remaining store on the West Coast will close the week before Christmas. ANC theaters plan to make it easier to recreate the movie theater experience at home. The company says it will sell its freshly popped popcorn in supermarkets and malls starting next year. So the first five shops are slated to open in early 2022 with more being added by the end of the year. The company will also sell packaged and microwavable versions at their popcorn stores as well as to go packages of popcorn for takeout or pickup at its theaters. AMC claims it sells up to 52 million bags of popcorn each year. That's the most popcorn of any movie theater company in the entire world. Steph, I'm with you. I don't think it'll be the same. I mean, unless we get the bucket right. and can complain about the lack of butter, it's not the same experience. <laughs> we can't complain about it. it. It's not worth it. Well, I guess in, in some, you can pick it up at the theater. I mean, but I'm all about this. If it, if it actually, you know, tastes like it's supposed to, I, mm -hmm. I would literally go on a road trip and I would stop at a movie theater like on I-35, like on the way to Austin at San Marcos, and I would go to the theater and buy popcorn and not watch a movie. I, I would. Seriously? It never yes. crossed my mind. <laughs> for, it never for crossed snack. my mind to visit a theater just to pick up the popcorn. I mean, it makes sense, but I, it never I, crossed my mind. I've done it, you know, quite a few times. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's just my secret, so. All right, well, the secret is out. 548, let's see how traffic's looking. Steven. Yeah, as long as you get a pickle, pickle, popcorn and pickle. Well, there you go. Yeah, you I feel, but I feel like I've heard that's just a Texas thing. I, I don't think that a lot of folks like that, but. The combination. Y mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think they like the combination, but they will like the way the roads are looking this morning. Loop 410 at Ingram. Uh, we do have a few more folks out there this morning. Loop 410 at San Pedro. You can see that the traffic is getting a little bit busier out there. 281 at Hildebrand. Again, a few more folks getting their morning started early, early with us. Uh, do you want to bring your attention to the map? 
though. We talked about a crash that was detected here off Loop 410 westbound at Callahan Road. Just check the TechStop website. They have since downgraded that to a stalled vehicle. So first responders could still be out there working to assist that driver, maybe a TechStop hero truck. So make sure that you give them plenty of room out there to clear up. Let's go ahead and take a jump. We still have that stretch of orange there off I-35 northbound at FM 482. Traffic continues to build in that area, so it's not looking good. This should have wrapped around 530. It's 549, so hopefully it will be clear before morning rush is upon us. Let's take a wider look at the map because we still do see a lot of green aside from that stretch of orange there building on 35. Gives us some time to talk about some of those gas prices. So AAA reports as of today, the average gas price in Bear County is 291 and around the state we're looking at 307. Now that national average as of today is 341 and as you just saw in that CNN report, obviously this is due to the demand that's gone up and also those crude oil prices and a fun little fact here that AAA also reports the last time that we really hit that 342 mark was back in September of 2014 when the maze runner rolled the box office and Taylor Swift's shake it off was also dominating the pop charts. So fun little fact there. Hopefully we can shake off those gas prices and let's go ahead and take one last look around town 281 at Hildebrand. Things are picking up guys. Nice. Wow. 2014. Memory yeah. Lane. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that was free. Back to Kmart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember the name of the store that it was derived from? No. No. Kresge's. Kresge? Kresge? Okay. SS Kresge, the five and dime. Hmm. I didn't know that. I thought I, it was always Kmart. I just remember the blue light special. Blue light, yep. Run to find <laughs> out where <laughs> that was in the store. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kresge's was a little five and dime founded in Detroit. Yep. Way back when. Another end of an era. Man, man it's, kind of, it's kind of sad, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. All right, a beautiful picture out there. Sunset over Brenham. Oh, my goodness gracious. Boy, that's pretty. Thank you very much for the KSAT Connect shot. This is a better, a clearer picture than what we had yesterday. Yesterday, there was a whole bunch of just the haze off in the distance and a lot more in the way of fog early, early in the morning. We're not really seeing anything as of right now. Still be on the lookout for a patch or two here and there, but temperatures are way above normal by a good 10 to 15 degrees. 67 still Stinson, Pleasanton, and even mid-60s in portions of the hill country. Uh, as far as the rest of today, we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning, and then we are going to see more sunshine mixing in. So more sunshine than what we had yesterday. Still a couple of clouds hanging around here, and that'll be uh, mostly clear skies going into the first portion of the evening. And then in the wee hours tomorrow morning, that's when the front moves on through here. Uh, this now this is the more, uh, I guess, generous or aggressive computer model with as far as the rain is concerned. It's still going to be really broken, kind of a broken line, a couple of showers here or there. And then most of that is going to be out of here before most folks get going tomorrow morning. So uh, a couple of leftover showers, maybe a damp spot on the roads tomorrow morning, and then we clear out quite nicely throughout the afternoon. So we'll see a lot more sunshine. Also much, much drier air is gonna be coming on in here as this front works its way on through here later on tonight. And you can barely make out some of those lower clouds, that uh, faint shade of gray sitting on top of us. Big storm system off to the north and west of us, but notice how most everything is moving just about straight west to east. That's the, kind of the weather pattern that we are, are in, this zonal pattern, but we do get this little bit of a front moving on through here overnight into tomorrow, and that will pull in the drier air. That sticks around for most all of the weekend, so we got a good looking forecast going into the weekend with this northwesterly uh, flow in the atmosphere, and then things start to flatten out a little bit. We will get a reinforcing shot of dry air coming in here Friday night into Saturday. Saturday and then also a little bit of a front trying to move through here and that's going to be on Monday, Tuesday, whether it squeezes out a shower or two kind of doubt that. But the, what we're not seeing, though, is any big, big surge of really cold air coming on in here. Yes, the drier air will allow low temperatures to get cooler, but uh, nothing just bone chilling. So 74 degrees, partly cloudy skies today at noon and then a high temperature makes it up to 78 and again, partly cloudy. And a lot of folks are going to be up into the low 80s later on today. Then tomorrow, after the front moves on through, we'll still be on the mild side starting off, but 74. So again, it's not a huge blast of cold air. Low temperatures will be low 50s, upper 40s, thanks to the, uh, the drier air allowing those temperatures to drop down. And that next week front, Friday into Saturday, again, maybe a sprinkle getting squeezed out in the overnight hours. Kind of doubt it, though, but good looking weekend. Can't complain there. Thank you, Mike. Fantastic news. 553, about 65 degrees. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3035, Fireball 4. Your daily 4, 2491, Fireball 1. 
Cash five number six, seven, 13, 19, 25 and mega millions, nine, 14, 16, 26, 49 mega ball, 14 mega plier three. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, a big setback for former President Trump overnight. A judge ruling he can't keep his White House documents secret from the House committee that is investigating that January 6th insurrection. We are live in Washington with the reaction. You'll see that and so much more right here on GMA. It's a big day for Katie Science Lab. Katie and David are hitting the road, heading to Carvel Hall Elementary School this morning for a live science lab with students. The kids are studying rocks right now, so Katie and David are going to make the classic volcano experiment using baking soda and vinegar. It's bound to be entertaining, so set your reminders to tune into GMSA starting at 9 this morning. We'd love to see you then. Still ahead on the early morning show, two people fighting for their lives after a shooting on San Antonio's west side. We'll tell you everything we know so far. And we have the latest on an overnight fire down on the south side. Multiple residents and an apartment complex displaced. Jonathan Cotto, staying on top of this story, joins us live with details. And Transguide right now, more cars on the road at uh, just about the top of the hour. There's a live look at 1604 and Culebra. One family says they are thankful to be alive this morning after a fire consuming their entire apartment building. Details coming up next. Pfizer officially requests the FDA to expand authorization to its booster shot for all Americans 18 and up. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, when you should expect to get a booster. And taking a look outside with live can this morning, we're at a humid 65 degrees, still not too bad, and we are expecting some changes. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday, November 10th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great week so far. I'm actually looking forward to the cool front again. Mike has two on the extended forecast. He has more on that and uh, focus on our midweek forecast. These are not cold fronts where you're just going to, you know, grab a jacket right. and sweater. I mean, in the mornings we'll need jackets, but it's not like a big blast of, of cold air. At least we're going to be getting rid of the humidity, though. So that's the, the good thing because it's pretty humid when you step outside this morning. We don't have as much in the way of fog as what we had yesterday the day before that, but there are a couple of uh, hints of it right now. Temperatures, though, I mean, everybody's in the mid 60s, and that's about anywhere from 10 to almost 15 degrees above the, the normal, the average low temperature. Castroville right now has five miles visibility, and again, that's the only spot as of last check that has any fog being reported. There may be a hint of it around uh, Seguin, so just be on the lookout for that over the course of the next couple of hours. Mold is on the low side, and uh, temperatures really aren't going to be going much of anywhere from where they are right now, thanks to the cloud cover as well as this humidity. And we will, though, see more sunshine later on today, especially compared to yesterday. And wind out of the uh, southeast about 10 to 20 miles per hour is going to continue to pull in that humidity. So we're going to make it up into the mid-70s today at noon, already above the, the normal high temperature. And then we top off upper 70s, and that means there's going to be a lot of low 80s around here. And again, with more sunshine. Now, the front's going to move through. Oh, about this time or even earlier tomorrow morning may squeeze out a couple little sprinkly showers, but the nice thing is it's going to get rid of the humidity. Then we have another reinforcing shot of some dry air coming in here just in time for the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, been fairly quiet so far. Uh, yeah, it's been uh, somewhat quiet. Yeah, I, I think we have a few more early risers out there on the roadways this morning, Mike. 1604 at Hausman. Uh, we got a rotating shot here. Loop 1604 at Valley Meadow. I-37 at Houston. Uh, the morning is getting going here. A few more folks getting their day started. So let's take a look at what's happening on our map right now. You can see that road work right now. Still a pesky issue. They're off I-35 northbound at FM 42. Traffic is still building in those northbound lanes, but not too far from there. We have a little stall that off the I-35 northbound at FM 1103. So obviously not a great place to be if you are experienced ever seen that construction out there. So make sure you're watching out for those driver because that trend continues back here in town off Loop 410 westbound at Callahan Road where we talked about this a little bit earlier. That's on the access road. So again, make sure that you're following the rules of the road and checking those vehicles because we do have a stall detected here off I-35 northbound at Southwest Military Drive. So that does seem to be the trending issue this morning. Taking a wider look at the map, oh, we still see a lot of green on the screen. So nothing to complain about.
about. And if you're going to be traveling into the downtown San Antonio area, perhaps in the next few moments, well, we got green across the board. 28 minutes on 37 from Pleasanton light Lytle right now, just 17 minutes on 35. And if you're coming in from Highway 90, we're looking at 18 minutes at this hour from Floresville. One last look around town, US 90 at 35. We'll continue to keep an eye on those stalls and let you know how that may impact your morning drive. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, sir. Fire breaks out in a south side apartment complex, displacing some people who live there. Jonathan Cotto is staying on top of this story and joins us live from the scene. Jonathan, was anyone hurt in the fire? Stephanie, fortunately, no. We're told the only family that lived inside one of these units were able to evacuate safely. Now, the scene is pretty busy here. It's wrapping up, but let's take a look at what the scene looked like just earlier today. San Antonio Fire Department responding to the 5900 block of South Flores. That's near East South Cross shortly after 3 o'clock. They say the garage area, which is on the back side of this apartment building, went up in flames, damaging several units. Now, they tell us the garage was being used for storage. Now, on arrival, fire crews tell us a wall collapsed while they were tackling the flames, but were able to quickly get control of the fire. The apartment building, again, is vacant with the exception of one unit. That family in that unit, as I mentioned, made it out okay and were not injured. They tell us that family will be able to go back into their home once the scene is secured. Now, again, I did have an opportunity to speak with the family. They said they had just been there. They had just moved in a couple days ago. They're in the process of moving out and say they are just thankful to be OK this morning. Now, fire crews tell us they are estimating anywhere between 80 to $90,000 worth in damages. But as to the cause of this fire, well, that remains under investigation. Reporting from the city south side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Scary scene for some hotel guests on San Antonio's northeast side who had to be evacuated after a fire broke out. It happened at the Home 2 Suites off Jones Maltzberger near Northeast Loop 410. That's where fire crews say an AC unit caught fire in one of the rooms. Crews were able to quickly knock out the flames and no one was hurt. Damage is estimated between five and seven thousand dollars. Two 18-year-olds are in critical condition after a shooting overnight. It happened just after 11 p.m. at the McMullen Square Apartments on the city's west side. San Antonio police say people living there heard gunshots and found two 18-year-old men shot in the driveway of that complex. One was shot in the face, the other in the stomach. They were both taken to the hospital. Sarah Costa is staying on top of this story and we'll have more in our next half hour of GMSA. Lawsuits continue to pile up against rapper Travis Scott and those behind the Astroworld Festival in Houston. At least 18 lawsuits since last week. And now on Friday, we're expected to hear about potential legal action regarding San Antonio and South Texas victims injured at the concert. Eight people were killed due to crowd surge. Houston's mayor promising no stone will be left unturned in the investigation. We also know a 56 page event operations plan for the festival includes protocols for active shooter, bomb or terrorist threats. But the Associated Press reports it did not include information on what to do in the event of a crowd surge. We'll have more on the deadly instinct in the next half hour of GMSA. In your other morning headlines, a federal judge has denied former President Trump's claim of executive privilege over hundreds of documents sought by the House Committee that is investigating the January 6th Capitol breach. The National Archives remain on track to turn over White House call logs and schedules and three pages of handwritten notes from Trump's then chief of staff. Trump's legal team has informed the D.C. District Court it plans to appeal the judge's decision. The Biden White House has declined to intervene. The National Archives, which inherited Trump's presidential records after he left office, has said it will begin handing over records on Friday. And unity over hate, the Jewish community coming together with their partners yesterday to preach that message. On the 83rd anniversary of Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, hundreds of people came together to stand in solidarity at the Jewish Community Center. This comes on the heels of anti-Semitic messages spreading in San Antonio in recent weeks. The rhetoric drew comparisons to November of 1938, but of course with a hugely different outcome. Even the communities of where Kristallnacht took place in, in Germany, um, the, the community didn't respond. They didn't say, not here. And so the genocide began. But here in San Antonio, we're going to say, not here, not today, not now, never again. To honor the anniversary, Bear County commissioners signed a proclamation honoring the anniversary of Kristallnacht and vowing to drive out hate and promote human dignity. 
Turning to the coronavirus, more children are getting the COVID-19 vaccine here in San Antonio. University Health says its goal is to vaccinate 5,500 kids a week. And so far, they say they're on track. It opened a clinic at the Wonderland of America's late last week. And today, Metro Health will use the Alamo Dome for its first mass kids vaccination site. That starts at noon today. This morning, Pfizer officially asking the FDA to expand authorization for its booster shots to include all adults. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, Pfizer asking the FDA to expand authorization for its booster shot for all Americans 18 and over. The drug maker is pointing to new data showing a third shot increases protection against symptomatic disease to 95% across all age groups. The request is coming just months after a public debate over boosters for all Americans when an FDA advisory committee voted down a similar request. Dr. Chatterjee voted no, Dr. Perlman voted no, Dr. Gans voted no. But new information suggests the outcome this time could be different. Sources familiar with the discussions now confirming to ABC News that the FDA will not be calling its independent committee to review Pfizer's data, which would mean authorization could happen before Thanksgiving. It will be very likely that everyone will be able to get a booster within a reasonable period of time. The news comes as the country sees an uptick in COVID cases. The new daily average sits at 71,000 cases a day, up almost 13% in the last two weeks, with 21 states seeing an uptick in cases by at least 10%. The common denominator, nearly all of the states are also transitioning to colder weather, forcing people indoors. One of those states, Colorado, where just 5% of ICU beds remain available statewide. The surge so severe, the state has reactivated its crisis standards of care to better staff hospitals. We are going into uh, this surge with fewer people and everyone is tired. Our hospitals and ICUs are filling up with patients who are going on ventilators and many of them dying. As of now, only people who've gotten the Johnson & Johnson one shot are eligible for a booster regardless of age. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. And time now, it's 610 and about 65 degrees. Are you planning on doing some traveling for the Thanksgiving holiday ahead on GMSA? We'll tell you how much you can expect to pay at the gas pump. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting the day a little humid at 65 degrees. But Mike says expect sunshine later today. We'll be right back. If you use PayPal or Venmo for business transactions, the IRS might be looking more closely at your accounts. It now requires electronic payment apps to report such transactions if they total more than $600 a year. Business transactions include payments for goods and services. You've always been required to pay tax on those. Now the IRS might know if you don't. The change part of the American Rescue Plan is designed to crack down on unpaid taxes. The change does not affect reimbursements among family and friends. So don't worry if you use the apps to split a pizza or something. And we might get a glimpse of pre-pandemic travel in a couple of weeks. AAA expects more than 53 million people to travel this Thanksgiving holiday. That's at least a 13% increase over last year. But as the economy rebounds, the price of crude oil skyrockets. A new forecast from the federal government predicts crude prices will hold steady and then drop back down next year. Until then, AAA says the national average for a gallon of regular and leaded is 342 compared to 211 a year ago. But how does that compare to prices before the pandemic? It's only about 80 cents more than what they paid in uh, 2019. So it's more. But as, as we've always discovered, no matter how much gasoline prices are, people are still going to take that trip. They'll just budget along the way. And air travel is also expected to go way up. But 90 percent of travelers are expected to drive this holiday. It's now just about 616. Go ahead and drive on over to Stephen Cavazos. How are the roads looking this morning? Hey, good morning, Mark and Steph. And if you're just waking up with us, a little bit of a tidbit information from AAA. They also report that 342. The last time we saw that was back in 2014. So uh, it's been quite a while. But uh, right now, the roadways are looking pretty good. 37 at Houston, I-10 at Frio. Traffic is moving through that area. Doesn't look like we're seeing any big delays at this hour. Very dark, though, off I-10 at La Cantera. Again, a few folks getting their morning started early. Morning rush is almost here. So what can you expect? Well, 
12 right now, a bunch of slowdowns and a few delays. So right now we're looking here at this road work off I-35 in the northbound lanes at FM 482, where traffic has just built throughout the morning. It's kind of stayed steady. We haven't seen it stretch so much, but we're going to continue to watch this. This road work, according to Texas, should have wrapped around five this morning. So uh, there could be experiencing some delay. I'll check in with our friends at Transguide and find out, but not too far from there. We do have a stall off of those northbound lanes at FM 1103. That has been the trending issue throughout the morning. We're seeing a stall also detected here off I-35 northbound at Southwest Military Drive. As we take a wider look, though, it's still pretty green, so we're not seeing any huge delays, but this is going to be the problem spot if you're heading up to New Braunfels or maybe Austin a little later this morning. We'll continue to give you all those updates on the roadways, but for now here in town, 281 at Hildebrand, traffic is still pretty light in some of these areas, but we know as the morning gets going, traffic can tend to slow down with those normal congestion spots. So we'll give you all the updates throughout the morning, guys. Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, you really don't need to warm up the car this morning at all because it's pretty uh, it's pretty warm out there. Very warm and humid. The temperatures are about 10 to 15 degrees above normal. A patch or two of fog, just a mention of it. There's a, a hint of it uh, going out 90 and toward Castroville right now. And that's about the only place being uh, where fog is being reported. 78 after school today and it's going to be yeah, a lot of folks going to be up in the 80s as well. So we will be anywhere from five almost um, well, in some cases, 10 degrees above normal. All right, the moon is in its waxing phase and it is just about tomorrow. Actually, it's going to be at the first quarter half moon out there. What a gorgeous picture. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect shot. All right, you're not doing a lot of uh, moon gazing or uh, any great sunrises this morning. As you can see all the clouds off there in the distance, but at least keep pointing out, unlike yesterday, we can see right along the horizon because there was a whole lot of fuzz out there yesterday and uh, temperatures. Everybody is in the 60s as of right now, and everybody's got a bunch of humidity as well. These two points, when you get above 60, that's that threshold you really start to feel the humidity somewhat. It's not oppressively humid, obviously, but uh, enough out there to where you do notice it, and that's going to remain throughout the rest of today. Now, tonight, in the overnight hours, that front moves on through here, and so that's going to be dropping the humidity down. So throughout the course of the morning tomorrow, we will see not only the wind shift around, but the air is going to continue to dry out. It's going to be much more comfortable throughout the day, and that's going to lead to some great weather, not only tomorrow, then we'll clear out quite nicely tomorrow, and then that's going to stick around throughout the, uh, the rest of the weekend. So computer model, and we see some sunshine later on today. Then here's that front moving on through, and it may touch off a couple of stray showers here and there, sort of a broken line of a couple of showers. That's going to be about the extent of it. This is not by any means going to be any sort of a, a rain event, if you will. It will clear us out. Like I said, drier air comes on in here. And we're going to clear out fairly quickly, so we'll have a lot of sunshine around here tomorrow and for the next few days. Then we get sort of a reinforcing little shot of some drier air coming on in here for the weekend. So here's the trough that brings the front through. We keep this sort of northwesterly flow. Then going into the rest of the week, weekend, that means good weekend shaping up here. That next front that comes through late Friday night, early, early Saturday morning. It's going to be about like the one tonight. It may squeeze out a stray shower. Kind of doubt it, though. 74 degrees, partly cloudy skies today at noon. It is going to be warm. It's going to be no, kind of on the humid side. You'll notice it. Uh, 78 with partly cloudy skies. Also kind of breezy wind out of the southeast. 10, 20 miles per hour. In behind the front tomorrow, then it's going to be breezy with wind out of the northeast. And again, an early morning shower is possible. Same thing on Saturday, maybe. But uh, yeah, we're shaping up with a good looking weekend. Again, I think we're going for three in a row of really nice fall weekends, pleasant mornings, nice afternoons, plenty of sunshine. Uh, one of the best things about living in South Texas during the, the autumn months. Yes, yep. this is the time to be here. And when people visit, they're like, we love San Antonio. We're like, yes, yes, come back. Yeah, come <laughs> back in July. See you in August. <laughs> <laughs> 620, about 65 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Netflix is testing a new feature for your kids. We're going to have those details ahead. What can I do with less asthma? With Dupixent, I can do more beginner's yoga. Namaste. Namaste. Surprise parties. Oh, you guys. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks. A three. So I can do more of the things I love. <laughs> Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here's something important. 
Pixin can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Just ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive, one-on-one -on -one with the Santa Fe District Attorney. How did live ammunition end up on this set? It's been nearly three weeks since the fatal shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the set of Alec Baldwin's film Rust. Crew members now at the center of this investigation, and DA Mary Carmack Altweez is prepared to wait months for it to be completed. What has been most concerning as you've learned the links this production went to to try to save a dollar here and there. There were so many levels of failures on that on that set. Um, there were several different places where this tragic incident could have been avoided, and it, it wasn't avoided. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have more on what the Santa Fe District Attorney says is next in this rapidly developing case. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And topping today's tech news, Twitter brings its subscription service to the U.S. Twitter Blue costs about $3 a month, and for that, users get special features, including the ability to undo a tweet. The subscription also includes free access to articles from hundreds of news sites. And Netflix is reportedly testing a new feed for kids inspired by the success of TikTok. According to Bloomberg, a feature called Kids Clips will offer young viewers short videos, but it will not have original content, just highlights of Netflix children's shows and movies. In sports, the UTSA Roadrunners try to extend their undefeated season this Saturday in the Alamo Dome. The team going for its 10th win in a row against 1-8 Southern Mississippi. Roadrunners actually favored by 33 points. Now the trick is not to overlook the Golden Eagles kickoff in the Dome Saturday for 2-30. And KSAT 12 Sports will be there. Our Spurs have managed only three wins this season so far. Two against uh, one of the worst teams in the NBA, the Orlando Magic, home and away. The most recent loss to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Spurs at one point jumped out to a 16-point lead, only to lose 99-94. to Tonight, they welcome the Sacramento Kings to town. That game set for 7.30 out at the AT&T Center. All right, go Spurs go. Time now, 626 and about 65 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, the latest on an overnight fire on the city's south side. Jonathan Glota will join us live with the latest. And Transguide right now, flashing lights, heavy traffic, 35 at FM 482. You're watching GMSA. Ten fire units responding to a fire at an apartment complex on the city's south side. Details coming up next. And we'll have more on that uh, story out of California about that big fire outside with live cam right now. We're not dealing with the fog that we saw that was fairly widespread on our Tuesday morning. Let's jump right into your Wednesday. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday the 10th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, no fog, but humidity that's out there. Definitely no jacket required today. Just about yeah. anywhere. Mike Osterhage is here with more. Yeah, temperatures this morning are well up into the 60s everywhere. And yeah, we've been talking about that humidity. There are just a one or two little uh, specks of fog out there, but things will change overnight. We've got a uh, front moving on through here. Now it's not going to be this huge blast of cold air, but it will get rid of the uh, the humidity and also some of these clouds eventually, although we will see uh, some more sunshine later on on today, especially compared to yesterday, but a pretty good cloudy start this morning. 65 degrees. The normal average low temperature is down in the uh, low uh, 50s, upper 40s right now. So we're 10, 15 degrees above that. And of course, two points above 60, which means you, know, you can feel the humidity. Just a hint of fog around Castorville this morning. That's the only spot uh, really in our area. Victoria does have a lot of very thick fog, but pretty much that's all confined well off to the east. So it's not going to be a big issue around here. Mold is on the low side and th throughout the rest of today, warm and humid this morning. It stays warm and humid. We will see more sunshine later on this afternoon than tonight. In the wee hours of actually tomorrow morning, that cold front's going to be moving on through here. It may squeeze out a shower. 
kind of doubt it's going to be a broken line of rain, if at all. And then things are going to clear out fairly quickly. We'll have some uh, clouds early in the morning tomorrow, and then a lot more sunshine. Drier air will have some uh, very pleasant low temperatures for the next few mornings. And then nice afternoons, plenty of sunshine, and it goes all the way through the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. What's the latest, sir? Well, you remember 35 was one of those spots where we saw a lot of fog out there yesterday. Obviously, we were keeping our eye on it throughout the morning, but here off I-35 at FM42, today's issue is all this buildup of traffic that we've been seeing just continuing to grow out, th out there throughout the morning. That is because some construction has led to some of those buildups. Uh, let's take a look right at the map because that red has just continued to stay steady throughout the morning right there in those northbound lanes at FM42. Uh, now, I just talked to our friends over at TransGuy. They do tell us that the construction crews out there are just picking up some of the equipment they should be wrapping soon, but obviously it's a headache for drivers. So make sure you pack your patience through 35 this morning. Let's take you back into town because we do have a crash that just came up here off Loop 410 eastbound at Blanco Road. Still early on to where we're not seeing any buildup in any of these eastbound lanes just yet, but we know morning rush is here, so that could change any given notice. Let's take a jump down here. We still have that stall off I-35 northbound at Southwest Military Drive, not causing any issues, but make sure you're checking the vehicles before you get your Wednesday morning going here. Again, pretty green on the screen with the exception of that stretch of red that we continue to see there off 35. But if you're traveling in from New Braunfels, it's still 29 minutes at this hour. We're seeing uh, 24 minutes right now coming in from Lavernia to the downtown San Antonio area. That's pretty normal uh, around this time, but we're going to continue to keep our eyes here. Hopefully this will wrap up pretty soon. We'll continue to keep our eyes updated here in the traffic lab and give you all the updates you need to know at home. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Cleanup still underway at a Southside apartment complex after a fire broke out in the garage. People who live at the complex are now displaced. This happened on South Florida's not far from East South Cross. Jonathan Cotto is live there with more. Good morning, Jonathan. Do we know how much the damages will cost? Good morning, Stephanie. Excellent question, because at a glance, you wouldn't know that these were an this, these were apartments. Right now, fire crews are telling us they're estimating roughly anywhere between eighty to $90,000 worth in damages. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like earlier today. San Antonio Fire Department responding to the 5900 block of South Flores. Again, that's near East South Cross Boulevard. Shortly after 3 o'clock, they say the garage area, which is on the backside of this apartment building, went up in flames, damaging several units. They tell us the garage was being used for storage. Now, on arrival, fire crews tell us a wall collapsed while they were tackling the flames, but were able to quickly get control of the fire. Now, in the apartment, although the apartment building was vacant, there was an exception of one unit. The family in that unit made it out okay and they were not injured. They tell us that family again will be able to go back into their home once the scene is secured. Mark Stephanie, arson is on scene. The scene is clearing up for the most part, but the cause of the fire remains under investigation. Reporting from the city south side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, Jonathan, thank you. Also new this morning, two people are without a home after a fire broke out in their house overnight. It happened just before midnight in the 1100 block of Highland Oaks near Penn Road on the city's west side. According to firefighters, a grease fire got out of control and burned through the roof of that house and everybody was able to get out safely. The American Red Cross was called to assist the people who live there. New this morning, an overnight shooting at a West Side apartment complex sends two people to the hospital. Both of those victims are fighting for their lives. Sarah Costa joins us here in the studio with more. And Sarah, do we know what led up to that shooting? Good morning. You know, investigators this morning are still trying to figure that out, Mark and Steph, because it's unclear exactly what happened before that shooting. But this is what we know so far. This unfolded just after 11 last night at the McMullen Square Apartments. That's on North General McMullen, not far from Bandera Road. Officers say they responded after people living there heard gunshots. A little later, two 18 year old men were found in the driveway of the complex. Both of them had gunshot wounds. One of them shot in the face, the other in the stomach. Now both were taken to the hospital and at last check they were both in critical condition. As for the suspects in this incident, police have not made any arrests and they say they only received a tip that the suspect may have been in a red car. We'll of course bring you any updates on this story as they become available. Mark and Stephanie.
Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man is behind bars accused of having a sexual relationship with a minor and supplying her with drugs. The Elbendorf Police Department arrested 35-year-old Adrian Huizar on trafficking charges after the victim reported the incident to her mother. The 14-year-old girl's mother says she went missing for three weeks, then returned home and reported that Huizar would give her drugs and alcohol, then force her to do sexual acts. If Huizar is found guilty, he faces up to 20 years in prison. An HEB employee killed the murder trial of her accused killer. Now in question, R.C. Curtis accusing the death of Paula Boyd. Her body was found in her apartment back in 2015. In the midst of the legal process, a Bear County judge declared a mistrial for Curtis. So far, it's not clear what led to that decision. Later today, the court plans to address the matter and decide whether the case will be dismissed or retried. The trial began early last week. Boyd, the grandmother of Curtis's wife, a medical examiner determined Boyd died from strangulation and blunt force trauma. New details this morning about the emergency response to that concert disaster over in Houston. Eight people were killed when the crowd tried to surge towards the stage, crushing each other. A nine-year-old boy is among the victims still fighting for their lives. ABC's Monu Kassar Abdi has more. This morning, a group of teenagers now giving their first-hand account of the deadly concert tragedy in Houston Friday night. That was probably one of the scariest things that I've ever been through. Um, gates had fallen, police were everywhere, and uh, it was just chaos already in the making. The teens who say they were injured during the chaos describe a lack of security. Jonathan Espinoza says several people were passing out, and he claims security did little to nothing to help. 200 plus people come, and instantly my ribs are getting collapsed into, into the gate. And I look at the guard, and he looks at me, and he's like, well, I can't do nothing. One security guard hired to work the event told TMZ he didn't even show up for the job because he felt the conditions were unsafe and the security team was understaffed. Others at the concert describe lax bag checks and rampant drug use. The Wall Street Journal reports investigators are looking into whether counterfeit drugs played a role in some of the deaths, including pills laced with fentanyl. Eight people died and dozens were injured when the crowd surged toward the stage, crushing each other. At least 18 lawsuits have now been filed. The event organizer, Live Nation, and the rapper on stage, Travis Scott, are named as defendants in most of them. Questions remain about why Scott kept performing for nearly 40 minutes after officials had declared a mass casualty incident. The Houston Firefighters Union said it had trouble communicating with medics at the scene who are working for a private company. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. On Friday, we expect to hear about potential legal action regarding San Antonio and South Texas victims injured at that concert. We'll be bringing you new information on the story as it becomes available. You can follow along over on our website at ksat.com. In your other morning headlines, firefighters in Los Angeles had their hands full overnight with a burning warehouse. Take a look at this video from the scene. You can see smoke and flames shooting into the night sky. Blaze also caused the roof to collapse. So far, no injuries have been reported. The fire there in the L.A. area is still under investigation. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Arlington National Cemetery celebrates its 100th anniversary this week by opening its plaza to the general public for the first time in 96 years. All day today, people can lay flowers and walk the plaza surrounding the grave of an unknown soldier from World War I who was buried there in 1921. The tomb now includes the remains of soldiers from World War II and the Korean War and has become a symbol of American military service and sacrifice. Usually only the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment has access to the plaza, the guards watching over the unknown soldier 24 hours a day. Today, of course, November 10th, the day before Veterans Day, marks another special day for some service members here in the United States of America. It honors the establishment of the U.S. Marine Corps. Happy birthday, Marines. The military branch was started way back in 1775, leading up to the American Revolution. Marines provide protection at sea along with the Navy. Marines probably say once a Marine, always a Marine. So if you know one, you can mark the day by thanking them for their service. From all of us here at KSAT, thanks for keeping our country safe. Yeah, happy birthday and thank you for your service. Time now, 640 and 65 degrees out there. One local man has gone from defending our country to beautifying our city. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story just ahead.
644 Halloween 2021, now just a fond memory, but it's really never too late for a good ghost story, right? And this one has to do with a living, breathing man named Ghost and the impression his artwork is having on the city of San Antonio. In this week's edition of If These Walls Could Talk, Katrina Weber shows us how he went from military member to a muralist. While his name implies otherwise, the work of an artist known as Ghost is becoming more and more visible. It's on bars and buildings downtown. Not too long ago, though, the artist himself was in battle. You know, a lot of us guys, we come back and we we lost our sense of purpose. He had just wrapped up tours serving in Iraq and Afghanistan when in 2014 he left the army and turned to art. I was just having a lot of problems, having a lot of issues, just kind of reintegrating into regular society again. And uh, as sort of an outlet, I started painting. Murals were a natural progression for Ghost, who had been drawing and painting his whole life, even while in the military. Eventually, the two missions began to meet. No matter how public the artwork is, most artists will tell you it's still personal. For Ghost, that means including a piece of himself in every mural. All of his artwork includes some sort of nod to his military career. I try to put an homage to it as much as I can. He also puts his name on every piece, a label given to him by a friend who he once Boom, scared as it, a prank. Know, a, so it kind of rang the bell, you know, it dinged right there at that moment because we were looking for brand names. He says he's grateful he found both his name and his calling, making him one happy ghost. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And the razors are out the window for a lot of guys around the newsroom as they take part in No Shave November. Stephen Cavazos joins us now with an update. And I, I learned earlier this morning kind of world shattering <laughs> news that this guy's name is Hank. Hank, yeah. we named him Hank. Hank. Yeah, yes. I like it. I was going with kind of a Ted Lasso theme. Oh, oh yeah, I could see that too. Yeah, yeah. But, but I like Hank too. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, and big shout out to Henry Keller from the art department. He worked pretty hard on getting Hank, uh, bringing him to fruition here. So shout out to Henry Keller there. Uh, and, you know, the razors are definitely being tossed out. I threw mine in the trash can, actually. I'm not going to be needing that for quite the while. <laughs> but uh, No Shave November has been off to a pretty good start here in the KSAT newsroom. In fact, I was just checking the website right now. Our team has raised over $3,000, $3,200 to be exact. Our goal right now is to reach 10,000 and 10 nonprofit organizations will benefit from all our efforts here in the KSAT newsroom to end cancer for all. Now the mission here you can take a look right now is uh, you can head over to KSAT.com slash no shave and hear why everybody and find out why everyone in our newsroom are the guys that is are participating in this endeavor this month. Obviously cancer has touched everyone in some way or another, uh, but we are hoping to raise those funds to provide cancer treatment prevention and obviously detection is important as well. So you can head over to KSAT.com slash no shave to learn more. Our team again has raised $3,200 in the first nine days of no shave November. Our goal is 10,000. You can donate to our team as a whole if you feel inclined to do so. Uh, again, would be really nice to get to $5,000 by the end of the week. So that's halfway through our goal. Again, right now we're at 3,200. Head over to kset.com slash no shave to learn more. Now let's go ahead and get a quick look at the roadways. A few issues out there this morning. A crash here off Loop 410 at Jackson Keller is causing a buildup. Not a great spot to be, especially with morning rush. Now here we have some flashing lights out there. It looks like like they, this may be in the shoulder lane right now, so we're not seeing any closures uh, from this shot at Transcott. But you see some of these vehicles here moving over. They're slowing down. That's exactly what you should do when you do see those flashing lights out there. Let's go ahead and take you right to the map because we are seeing that buildup in the eastbound lanes right at Vance Jackson Road is where that crash is being reported. We'll continue to watch that throughout the morning. Still seeing that slowdown right here off I-35 northbound at Roy Richard Drive where traffic is moving at 30 miles per hour. So some progression. Now keep in mind there was a uh, construction that was experiencing some sort of delay out there. Uh, that is why we're seeing that buildup. And as we take one jump down here off I-35 northbound at Southwest Military Drive, a stall still detected there. It's been a pretty busy morning out on our roadways and morning rush is here, so we'll be keeping a close eye on things. Uh, let's go ahead and find out what the weather's going to be like. I'm looking forward to some fall, the fall. Me too. Yeah, fall weather. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. We will get a taste of it uh, coming in late tonight. That's Not okay. a big blast of cold air, but at least we get rid of some of this humidity. So nice. That'll work. Cool picture. Look at that spider web. That nice. thing just neat as can be. Kind of hard to miss, isn't it? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Plus, the sun's hitting it just right. Yeah, we were out walking the dog the other day, and in some of the bushes, there was a spider, and they're just fascinating to look at. Did you see the caption here, Mike? That was pretty. The orb weaver's web. Hmm. 
I guess that is the spider eye. We've got some Googling to do, my friend. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Okay. Cool picture, though. Thank you very much for that one. All right, lots of clouds starting off this morning. We will see more sunshine later on today. Cloud cover and the high humidity. It's acted like uh, sort of like a blanket on top of us, so that's kept temperatures 10 to 15 degrees above normal. 52 is the normal average low temperature this time of year. And yesterday, of course, we made it up to 76. We had a few extra clouds hanging around here. A lot of those uh, kind of mid and high clouds. We'll see more sunshine today, so that's going to put temperatures well up into the upper 70s and a lot of low 80s around the area of about so oh, five, six, seven degrees above the, the normal high temperature as well. So here's the moisture in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere that we had yesterday. That's why we had the clouds. Now a little bit drier upstairs. So once we get rid of some of these cl morning clouds, we are going to see, like I said, more sunshine. And also notice how there's this flow coming in here, kind of a, a low, a trough up there, uh, four corners area. That's what's going to be pulling this front on through. But notice how it's coming pretty much from the west, not from the north. So it's not a big blast of cold air, like I said, but it will pull in, obviously, that drier air around here. So here's the uh, computer model throughout the rest of today. And like I said, we're going to clear out somewhat, see some sunshine. Then as the front moves through, and again, it's not going to be any sort of a big, big rain event. As a matter of fact, this particular computer model is not really encouraging as far as the rain. It has a lot of it well off to the east of us, but hardly anything around here. There may be one or two showers in the wee hours tomorrow morning, but things are going to move along fairly quickly. So by the time really the morning commute gets going, we should start to see the clouds really clear out nicely and then a lot of sunshine throughout the day tomorrow. And as far as the humidity, like I said, it will be dropping down, tries to come back up slightly on Friday, but then we get another really good reinforcing shot of that dry air coming on in here uh, Friday night into Saturday with yet another one of these not really cold, cold fronts, but the drier air sort of front moving on in here. 74 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature. We're going to make it up to 78 today and partly cloudy. It's also going to be breezy prior to this front moving through with wind out of the southeast about 10, 20 miles per hour. And then in behind the front is going to be breezy tomorrow. We will make it up to 74 in the afternoon, so about uh, more normal temperatures. And then look at the lows right around, say, 50, even upper 40s all the way through the weekend, that next front. And again, each one of those may squeeze out a shower or two. Mm -hmm. Kind of doubtful though, and still a good looking weekend around here. Yeah, we'll take the weekend. Yep, nice uh, football weather too, Friday night. Let's True. keep it going. Thank you very much, Mike. We're on a hot streak right now as far as great weather. 651, about 65 degrees. And lung cancer is one of the leading causes of death in the U.S., so what do you know about it? Do you have to be a smoker to get it? Are men or women more prone to have it? We'll have those answers for you tomorrow on GMSA. Thanks for starting your day with us right here on GMSA. Outside with live cam, lots of clouds. As we look back towards downtown, we're waving at you right now. You just can't see us right now. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Time now is 655. Be on the lookout for this crash off Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. It's causing some issues out there. Taking a look right at our map. That's in the eastbound lanes at Vance Jackson, that is. So you can see that traffic building in that area. Let's go ahead and take a jump up to 35, where we still have a slowdown that's improving off the northbound lanes right at Roy Richard Drive. But coming into these inbound times, this is what you can expect if you're traveling to San Antonio here in the next few moments. 28 minutes from 281 in Bulverde and a delay from 29 on with 29 minutes coming in from US 90 and Castroville, Mike. Pretty gray sky starting off this morning. Thank you, sir. And you really don't need a jacket when you head out the door. We got some uh, 60s around here and plenty of humidity. We will see more sunshine later on today. And these dew points are well above 60, so you feel the uh, the humidity. 78 for a high temperature today. Kind of breezy wind out of the southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Now we do have that front moving through tonight. It's going to clear out that humidity. Uh, maybe squeezing out a sprinkle in the early early morning hours. Then some beautiful weather is going to be setting up through the uh, the weekend. Another reinforcing shot of dry air Saturday. We'll hey. take it. Yes, we will. That's a wrap, folks. We'll see you back here at 9. Have a great day.